therapy when using a PARP inhibitor, it is always given or the best responses are seen when it is used in the first line. So first line maintenance therapy is, uh, is without doubt or unambiguous uh, that. Uh, so six minutes for each and then rebuttals. Thank you so much. Sushir sir, you're there. Yes, and, and you have already become partial by making me as a panelist. You, know? you can't make a surgical oncologist a panelist and not defend a surgeon. So, so over to you. Please, let's yeah. Thank you so much. The session. We've got two good speakers. So, I would like to start the session. The, uh, on HIPAC for yes, Mr. Dr. Chandrakan, please go ahead. Yeah. Dr. Chandrakan is, I think, his slides are coming. Yeah. So thank you, sir, for the introduction, and I would thank organizers uh, for this opportunity. So I will be uh, presenting uh, on HIPAC. As you can see, it's nothing but chemotherapy, but it is heated and it is given inside the tummy and not inside the way. The root and heating is what that makes the difference. And we're hitting the same platinum that we give IV. So these are my first reactions, you know, like when a medical oncologist is asked to speak on HIPEC, I mean, that's, I mean, I really expect it to be against it. But when I am asked, it's like our prime minister canvassing for Congress. And these were my first reactions uh, when I saw, when I have to speak for the motion. So, well, what is the rationale, you know, why, why do you want to, uh, basically uh, do a HIPEC. These are the probable things, you know. The most common reason why a patient with uh, ovarian cancer dies is because of intestinal obstruction and eradicating peritoneal disease is the limiting factor, you know, is the most important factor. For that, you need optimal cytoreduction, platinum chemo, IP chemo. All these have improved overall survival. HIPEC is nothing but eradicating that intraperitoneal disease, and that is the rationale. And this is the slide, which is important. The moment patient goes into remission, you know, the first progression free interval decides the overall outcome. So that uh, 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 progression free interval, the PFS1 is the one that matters and that results in long-term overall survival. This is the rationale for HIPEC. You know, CRS, when you combine it with HIPEC, they act synergistically. And when you heat chemotherapy, it uh, results in better uh, bioavailability and uh, improves its efficacy. And there is a good preclinical pre data for its better action. So, well, do we have any evidence, you know, clinical evidence for uh, HIPEC to show some positive uh, signals? Yes, there are more than two randomized control trials uh, that has addressed HIPEC uh, in the advanced ovarian cancer setting. And in whom do you want to give? In those patients who are newly diagnosed, even in recurrent platinum sensitive setting, you can give at least stable disease after three cycles of new adjuvant chemotherapy with a good performance status treated with interval cytoreductive surgery with uh, the residual disease of less than one and no history of previous malignancies. And this is how you do HIPEC, you know, <laughs> it's called as an open uh, Colosseum technique where you give 100 milligram per meter square. The one that you give IV has to give, be given, it, it has to be heated to 42 degrees centigrade with a flow of one liter per minute, 50% at the start and 25 and 25. And you need to give sodium theosulfate for renal protection. And when you use the sodium theosulfate, definitely the renal toxicity reduces. Well, do you have any evidence for improvement in recurrence-free survival? Absolutely. You can see a good hazard ratio of 0.63 adding nearly three to four months of recurrence-free survival if I just change the route of administration of cisplatin. Do you have evidence for overall survival? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the rare trials where, uh, you know, not adding fancy immunotherapies, not adding fancy oral tablets, but just changing the route of one single injection intraperitoneally, 10-year follow-up has significantly improved overall survival and the magnitude of difference is more than one year 
So what else you need? Is it too toxic? Absolutely no. In an experienced hand who can use a peritoneal stripping and who has the experience of handling the toxicities, if you use in a clinical trial, definitely there is no difference in toxicity at all. Three, grade three or four is not different. And even in the recurrent ovarian cancer setting, if you use it with the thiosulfate infusion, you do not have difference in renal toxicity also. And there is always a criticism that the subsequent therapies are not well used, but these trials have got 10 year follow up and the subsequent therapies are used at par in both the arms and this is well balanced. Let's get quickly into the trials. This is the first trial in the first line setting uh, in an EGM resulted in improved overall survival and recurrence free survival. This is a study design and three cycle NACT and then CRS hyper okay. three more cycles and then uh, PFS and overall survival. And this is the summary. You can see the five year overall survival is 12% different. I mean, I mean, so one minute to go, sir. Median overall survival is 12 month difference. And these are the characteristics. And this uh, concludes that HIPEC improves overall survival. And this is the Korean trial. Again, this also shows an improvement in overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.53. And this is a recurrent platinum sensitive ovarian cancer, even here. The endpoints like overall survival, progression-free survival, time to subsequent treatment, all are better. Well, this is probably the important slide that you have to look into. If you look into the delta of benefit with different uh, drugs, first line wave, the hazard ratio is 0.76, 10 months difference. Uh, Olaparib, in whatever setting you use, the hazard ratio is not that impressive. The magnitude is less than a year but if you use HIPEC and you have 10 year follow up and the magnitude of difference is 14 months with the hazard ratio of 0.53 and this is the criticism that I use that just one cisplatin improved overall survival but maintenance chemotherapy in a meta-analysis has not shown more so therefore giving more cisplatin definitely has not it is something to do with heating and something to do with giving intraperitoneal so my final words are there is an unprecedented overall survival benefit of 12 months with 10 year follow up. It is replicated in three randomized trials, manageable toxicity profile, one time infusion for 90 minutes, no biomarker, no maintenance, no late toxicity, cost effective, same cisplatin, heat it up and give it IP. That's the way to go. So, HIPEC should be the standard of care in all advanced ovarian cancer with interval cytoreductive surgery. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Uh, sir, one small.